You may remember Rob's 1972 flat windshield Super Volks rod. And as you've seen in previous videos, I've been working on it for the past few months. It's a decent rust-free car that just had a ton of stupid people problems with wiring and loose bolts and other issues because it was likely owned or maintained by somebody that doesn't know Volkswagens or probably doesn't even understand cars in general. Well, it was a fun project. But since Rob dropped off this other Project Beetle on me with a lost key and no engine, I told him the Super Volksrod has got to go. I just don't have the space for this much nonsense. So it was time to get the last things working on this car and send it home with Rob. And after many days of rain, he was ready to finally pick it up for its proper maiden voyage to take it home. So here's the story. Licky likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to plug the dingle belly so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links, and we'll be back right after the intro. Thanks for watching. All right, trying to straighten out the last things on this car. And the last problem we had was the brakes in the rear were locking up on both sides. I shouldn't say locking up, but, but dragging pretty badly. And I think that was one of the reasons for why it seemed like we had such a performance problem with this car. Even after I went and I replaced the carburetor, you notice there's a Solex on there now instead of that Chinese Weber garbage that was on there that did not want to work right. If it ran right on one side, it would not run on the other. I'd fix it on one side, and then it would have problems on the other side. I had enough of that crap. Rob wanted to save gas, so the best way to save gas is to put a stock carburetor back on there. Now this may be a performance engine. We will look to upgrade that again in the future when the gas prices come back down. Hopefully they do. I'm not going to get into all the politics behind that crap because that's not what we do here on this YouTube channel. But when it comes to being frugal and trying not to spend that much money, he wants something he can cruise around in instead of his V8, which is burning entirely too much gas. This should do two to three times better than what he's uh, getting in that thing because his Ford has problems, but let's not get into that either. That's not what the comment section down below is about. <laughs> anyway, all the brake lines on this car had been replaced. Solid lines, rubber lines, everything looked like it was new. I mean, even the calipers on the wheels had been replaced. So I assumed that it couldn't be anything possibly wrong with the brake lines. I figured maybe there was a little piece of dirt in there considering that the, uh, the backs are both locking up that I should pull things apart and just clean it all out. Anyway, when I released the bleeder valve on that side, that side then began to spin. But when I went over to the other side, it did not. So it didn't relieve the pressure from the other side. So that means I had probably two problems. The problem wasn't up the chain, it was rather on each independent wheel. So I went and looked at the rubber lines up underneath, and I discovered these nasty, crusty things. So out of all those lines that were replaced, these are the only ones they didn't replace. And they were terrible. I mean, look at how they're, they're, the rubber is blown out. Now this rubber itself does not hold the pressure, there's actually a braided line inside of that, but the fluid was in between the rubber and the braided line, so these things had gotten all nice and puffy, and then they caved in on themselves, so uh, it took a long time for the pressure to bleed off here. So we're getting rid of those, well I've already gotten rid of those, there's new lines that are installed, they've already been bled out, I'm about to stuff these wheels back on here. Um, these are a little odd, I haven't seen these installed this way yet, these are actually front brakes installed on the rear. Um, they don't have any provisions for an emergency brake. So an emergency brake handle in this car actually does not work. I don't like that, but somebody was probably trying to save a little money and I think this disc brake kit was probably a hundred bucks cheaper. Nonetheless, this is what's on here, this is how Rob's going to run it. He just needs to understand to uh, leave it in gear <laughs> when he parks it somewhere. Okay, well I'm going to throw these wheels back on and then we're going to take this thing for another test drive. And we're going to make sure everything works. Oh, I had to check the fuel gauge on it too. For some reason that stopped working. And I think it's pretty safe to assume it's something on the back of the gauge because when I was dicking around on the back of the gauge with some of the light bulbs, that's when the, that thing stopped working. So probably a wire unplugged loose. Maybe something's tarnished and you wiggle. You get the point. But uh, yeah, there's the Volksrod. I think it looks kind of odd with those wheels tucked up underneath. But I did that temporarily instead of jack stands. Yeah, I know. Oh, Duck Man, if the jack quit, it's going to fall down. And what are you going to do then? It's going to roll right off of those wheels. Probably won't. But I think if it started moving, it would give me enough time to move out of harm's way. Nonetheless, I'm safe. Guess what? MFDM. Fuck off. <laughs> 
All right, here we go. Wheels on. Oh, we're down. All right, I was checking that gas gauge in there, which didn't want to work. So I went up under the hood over here and checked the wires going into the sender. This is the one that goes to the gauge, and this is the ground. I want to make sure that's grounded properly. Typically, this is grounded even without the wire, but because there's supposed to be a gasket that runs around the entire uh, surround of the gas tank, sometimes they don't ground that well. Well, I started tracing wires back up to the gas gauge itself. I wiggled what they call the vibrator, which is this thing right here. And then I pulled this wire in and out, and I went back and I checked it, and it turned out that this wire actually had a little bit of corrosion on it. And it just needed to be pushed in and out of here a couple times. And then the gas gauge worked. Not very much gas in there at all. If we turn the power on, look at the gauge. There it goes. There's only a couple gallons in the bottom of the tank, just enough to get it running. In fact, a minute ago, the gas gauge even showed higher than that. Wake up here. <laughs> well, there you go. The government's even stealing gas from me now. There it goes, it's still going up. Guess you just had to wait a little bit longer. Okay, well, it's working. And then lastly, we got two ways to start this car. We can turn the key switch, or we can push the start button. But either way, if this and this are not turned on, then it will not start. Mr. Rob is finally here to pick up his Super Beetle. How's it going, Rob? Pretty good, pretty good. It's been a little while. A little excited. So you got something on here. We got us a license plate. Yeah, now I'm legal. This car is officially legalized. That's right. Everything on it we had working, and now it's time for it to go. Well, guess what I got in my hand? He's got the keys. Did you want me to hang on to a spare set? Oh, heck yeah, you know I figured. I <laughs> I'll have to just make a set. <clears throat> Oops. Make a set. Leave you with the originals. Gonna make you another set of the trucks. One key for the doors, and one key for the ignition. I think it's the uh, fat one goes in the door, and the skinny one goes in the ignition. I don't judge. Oh ho! <laughs> there it is. Oop, there it is. There you Get go. Out of I'll show you how everything works in here. Whoa. You know how motorcycles have a, a run switch and a key? Kind of. That's kind of how it works on here. All right. Now go ahead and stuff a key in there and, of course, push your clutch in. Or, yeah, the seat's in uh, Duckman position right yeah, now. So. Yeah, like wait a minute. <laughs> Long distance. I think the handle is on the, um, yeah, you got it. It's on the outside. On the outside? I think so. Well, on the outside, like, yeah, right there. Try the other side then. I thought it was there. Maybe it's closer to the tunnel. Oh, there. there it is. Oh. There you go. Oh. I could not possibly drive it that way. <laughs> I need the maximum position and it's still too small. <laughs> oh, oh, I can't do this. My legs are too short. Well, you can move it all the way back. Too. Was I supposed to clutch it once? Nope, you did something else wrong. What did I do? Well, you turned the oh. key to start it, but you remember we have that wonderful switch panel up there on oh, the dashboard yeah. that does a bunch of stuff. This one here? That's where your run switch is, right. Turn that on, and then put your key into the run position. There, see how the lights just came on? Yeah. Now you've got idiot lights on the dashboard. you got your two on there. Yep. One is for your um, generator or alternator, and the other one's for the oil. Right. You make sure that they both come on when you first start this car. Oh, okay. If they don't come on when you start this car, you need to start fixing it before you run it. Don't expect don't to run it home, start. yeah, because if it has problems, then it's gonna have a bigger issue. Okay. The start button on your dashboard is also an oil light. So that start button will not come on unless for some reason there's either no oil pressure or the car is not running. That's okay. kind of the same thing, because if the car is not running, clearly it has no oil pressure. Now you've got um, three switches there on the dashboard. The switch that's closest to you is your running lights. The one in the middle yep. is your headlights. 
And the one way off to the right could be wipers, but currently we don't have any wiper motor installed in this thing, so that's oh. not do doing anything. So if you play with it and doesn't do anything, don't be surprised. Perfect season to be driving. Now this car, it fires up every time that I start it without pumping the throttle. Okay. So don't pump it because if you do, you might flood it. Okay. So simply, now that everything's turned on, as you got your run switch turned on there, you can push the start button and it should start. There it is. Alternatively, you can turn the key, but that run switch has to be on. Now you notice all the idiot lights went out. Yeah. So essentially, this car is ready to go. It does like to be warmed up, but it does not need to be warmed up. You can drive it immediately. Yeah, the emergency brake doesn't work on here. Remember we talked about that. It's got custom rear disc brakes on it that don't have an e-brake. That's correct. <laughs> when you park it, leave it in gear. First or reverse? Is it like H pattern? You remember where the reverse is at? All the way over back. Uh, close, but it's on the left side. And pull the trigger when you slap it over there. shifter a little bit. I'm not too keen on that shifter. If you end up hating it, we'll replace it. I turned the T-handle that way, by the way, because it kept hitting my knee because my legs are so big. So. <laughs> oh my God, but you should be able to get it in gear and you should be able to go around the block once with it and I'd like to see you drive it because I don't have any footage of it moving. Get your windows rolled down because it's going to get warm in there. And this right here is your air conditioner. Oh, 50 to nothing. And because of the way the bottom of the hood is cut on this, the air will come through the, the uh, speaker holes also on the dashboard. So even if your windows are closed, you get a draft. All right. Which might be a little annoying in the winter. <laughs> Still moving that seat around, huh? Went all the way back. Make sure you push the handle back down to lock it in. The handle you pulled for the seat. Oh, I did. Back. But the mosquitoes are biting me. Yeah. I finally got a bite. Oh, the good job. There you go. That's that stock carburetor you put on there because the uh, carburetor that was on there before was one of them empty Weber. Chinese nonsense. A little choppy because it's cold, but sounds good otherwise. It's running on all cylinders again, which was a big deal. Yeah, that car did not want to run on all cylinders previously. I don't know where he just went. All right, I thought I was going to turn around and come back. <laughs> I hear him coming. He's a couple blocks down that way. He'll probably be rocketing around this side in just a minute. I was wrong. He came back around this way. I guess he turned around back there. Oop, bottomed it out. <laughs> there it is. Those uh, power brakes and stuff on a dime, not the one supplied with. Yep, and that brake pedal has a little more motion in it that I'd like. Yeah. That's because of the rear discs that are on here. We can raise that up if it's something that really bothers you. Otherwise, give it a couple pumps, it, it works just fine. But yeah, it can be adjusted with a, um, a residual pressure valve, which would hold the uh, pedal back a little, a little higher. Something I'm going to do to uh, Bee's Car McGee also. She's got the same situation. Yeah, I think I'll just adjust to it at some point. I think you will. If not, we can put it on there. It's only like $24 or something, so we'll just yeah. install it. But I'll probably be driving in rain at some point, so I'll need to... Uh... Rain exit. Yeah, I want to rain exit, but we'll do what we can do. Yeah, rain exit. Otherwise, it runs great. It just needs to be warmed up. It is a little bit choppy, as you probably noticed, and some of the reasons for that is um, 
when you first get on the throttle, it might kick up or spit once or twice. It's not the accelerator pump, it's the distributor. No, it got up and went. Yeah, it does go. <laughs> it goes. That engine is uh, no joke. I can't imagine with that other uh, carburetor. Too. Yeah, it should give you more guts on it for sure, but uh, it should give you good gas mileage right now. But the 009 distributor is, is kind of slow to react and doesn't doesn't advance like a, a vacuum distributor would. So what you're going to experience is a little bit of a choppiness, hiccup or a spit, and then it'll go. No. But you can modulate the throttle and you can get around that. Gas gauge. Gas gauge is uh, right there in the middle. It yeah. is on reserve. You have more in there than you think, but do fill it up as soon as you leave here. All right, where's the gas? Um, a couple blocks that way. No, where's the gas? <laughs> oh, up front. Front right. Front right. Where the front right. Was. Yeah, correct. Right above where the fender was. Yeah. I'm gonna go fill it up now, I guess. You wanna do that and come back? Yep. And then I'll follow you wherever you're going. All right. I'll follow you back and tell you where I'm going in a minute. <laughs> Nope, no power or anything. <laughs> Boy, that sounds good. Oh, much better now that it's warmed up. Much better. It does have that 009 on there, and I do not like the way those things drive with the 009, but... If he chooses to, he may put a vacuum distributor on her in the future, or maybe he'll get electronic ignition, we'll see. Otherwise, like he said, the thing runs phenomenally. That uh, does not have a stock engine on it, even though we put a stock carb on there. But right now, it's all about economy. He's trying to save some money on this thing because uh, he spends way too much money on his Ford F-150 in gas. Here he comes, fresh tank of gas. Let's see if he bottoms out on the uh, speed bump again. <laughs> Bottom down on that speed bump there, huh? Well, I think all the noise you heard was the uh... the front end is lowered considerably. Well, I think it was all the noise in the in the, the hood of the, the front of the. I don't know. Oh, all the stuff banging around? Yeah, it probably. But it did bottom out. I actually caught it on a video. I got to see it for a change because I heard it whenever I dry over it. I just never got to see it. <laughs> right now. Uh, during daytime, I couldn't tell. At night, it probably would, though. <laughs> but yeah, it did bottom out on the speed bump. <laughs> yeah. So it runs good, huh? Yeah, $35, miles, uh, $35 for seven gallons of gas, eight gallons of gas, something like that. That's all we needed to fill it, really. There was more in there than I thought then. Did it show full on the gauge? I mean, I'll figure this is a tank. Uh, 13 gallons or something. Turn the key on and then turn the run switch on there. Gas gauge is going. Yeah. That's what mine shows too. It never showed full. <laughs> it was just a little bit below it. <laughs> just be safe. <laughs> it's uh, inaccurate um, to the um, negative. It's, it's a very pessimistic gauge. It'll say you have less than you actually do, which is a good thing, I guess, so you won't run out. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> well... I'm going to call up my shoes and I'm picking her up. All right. It's been a while to figure the seatbelt thing out. Yeah, it's got that clasp on it. I meant to explain that to you and I forgot. I hope I can figure out how to get out of it. There we go. Yeah, you kind of slide the thing back on it. Yeah. A little different, but it's I a like it. Unusual design. Only the uh, Beatles from those that era had that. What so. are these two? Are these left and right brakes? Where are you pointing to? Oh, that used to be the heaters. The heaters? Yeah, that was the heater. Open up a heater uh, valve. Oh, I feel warm on one end. Well, they're not installed, so... You shouldn't feel anything on them. <laughs> oh, there's one on the right, left. Yeah, left. there's there's no heater boxes on this car. I see there's J tubes, so somebody eliminated the heaters on here a long time ago. We don't need no stinking heaters. There you go. Boy. The tire should have air. That looks flat. I don't think it is though. Oh well, maybe it is. We'll put some air in there for you. Before we send you away, make sure you're aired up. I just aired up the back ones to make sure that was right, but now that I see it where it's sitting, it doesn't look right. Yeah. I'll go grab my this, didn't I? Oh yeah, the ear pump thing. This thing is fantastic. You and I, you need to set up your DeWalt side by side with this. Hey, hey are you ready for me to oh, pick Oh, you're on the phone. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's one of them guys who wears the earbuds. He's oh. got to figure out if he's right, on the well, phone or not. I was going to pick you up on the bus. I'm on this side of town. Well, as I was saying, you need um. to get your DeWalt <laughs> compressor with yep. a fresh battery on it, and we'll hook up and we'll see which one can fill up a tire first. I'm curious. <laughs> this thing is just an awesome little tool. 
I want to check this out. Links down below in the video description, and they're not paying me for this one. This tool is just so awesome that I use the crap out of it. <laughs> Another time I don't have to go and run the compressor hose all the way down here. That, I wouldn't mind having one that's smaller than my air compressor. Oh, that thing is just awesome. And it has a battery jump starter in it too. So if your battery's oh, dead, you can better. use that Mine too. Have that. Yep. I actually used it on Dad's uh, um, Honda this morning. I haven't moved it in a couple weeks and the battery was getting a little bit, little bit low. So I jumped it and it, it cranked over in a hurry. <laughs> oh, I can use that in the Honda. Honda needs to be charged up. Actually, it cranked over so damn fast, it was almost like it was 24 volts. Huh. It was just amazing how fast it turned over when, it, when I turned the key on it. And it just has its own internal battery that you charge up by USB or something? Uh, there's a, um, a plug-in for the cigarette lighter okay. or an adapter plug in your wall at home. Okay. But it does have a charger on the side for your phone. Do I have a uh, cigarette lighter in here? Uh, I don't think so, but we can add one. Okay. It's almost a pressure already. <laughs> it came up from 12. Wow. It'll bring it up to 27. Now it'll take like 27 PSI in this car. It might actually even be a little bit uh, high. But it's about ready to go off. Oh, did we figure, did we have the wrench for these things? Yeah, you got one. It's in the glove box. Okay. Did we have to buy that or did we have it? You bought it. I did buy it? Yep. Yeah, I don't know. Before you leave, let me just check your lug nuts too. Because they had the brakes all apart. Oh, you mean the one on the car? This one's always this. Not the one behind the steering wheel. <laughs> yeah, it's about ready to turn off. There it is. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? And what, you set it to 27 pounds? Yeah, I set it to 27 PSI right there on the gauge and uh, it did the rest of the work for me. People are really having a hard time driving between these vehicles. It's nothing new for this neighborhood. Nothing new for this neighborhood. People can't drive worth a damn. They do a lot of really stupid shit through here. <laughs> yeah. All right. There it is. I'm gonna go grab a lug tool and uh, we'll get you snugged up. Just make sure everything's good. It's probably okay, but. All right. Now let's pick up Mercedes. We go right to the house. Well, I've got to learn a little bit about recording videos and not to take off way before I'm able to get in the car, turn around, and leave. As a result of which, he's several cars ahead of me, which means I can't get a good video. Thanks, Rob. Now I'm probably gonna miss the traffic light because I got a bunch of a-holes in front of me. They're going super fucking slow. This guy was actually going off the road before. I don't know what his problem was. <laughs> well, he's blowing some smoke. That's new. You know what, I don't smell anything though. Maybe it's steam. Cause this car did get totally hosed yesterday. I mean, like, it got rained on really hard. And I see it's starting to disappear a little bit now, but yeah, we'll see what's about to happen. Yeah, the fact that I can't smell it and the fact that the smoke dissipates into the air, um, you don't see clouds of it. Uh, I think it's just some steam. There probably was some water trapped somewhere in there. Looks like his brake lights are working, that's good. Glad to see that. Yep. Looks like he needs a little practice shifting gears. He's had it been a while. That's gotta be smoke, man. I think we might have some oil spilling out there on his exhaust. I wonder where it's coming from. I'm not getting any spray on my windshield. And again, it still looks like it's dissipating. I don't know what we're looking at there. Something we're gonna have to check out. Huh. Nice to see the signals working. Yeah, that smoke is, uh, that's bothering me a little bit. Again, it, it, it dissipates. It doesn't stick in the air, though. It just disappears. And I don't smell anything. Nothing. It's got to be water. I wonder where it's coming from if it is water. Where, where's all that water sitting at? Blue. 
push. I don't smell a damn thing. You know, maybe there's some water sitting. Uh, why would there be water sitting in the exhaust pipe? Yeah, I see his muffler's covered with something. Maybe there is oil coming out of somewhere. Yeah, I guess Duckman's got something to fix. <laughs> Sounds fine. And again, I still don't smell anything. And I got one of the best noses in the country, I'll tell you what, I can smell stuff nobody else can, but uh... I don't smell any oil. lights and turn signals are working at the same time. You know, so the light on the right hand side there, and you Euro guys are gonna hate that because I believe Euro law requires a separate light for turn signal from brake lights and running lights. Well, here in America, you can get away doing stuff like this. smoking it seems to be doing it less maybe because it's out of oil <laughs> he knows to shut it off if he sees the idiot lights but he's got to pay attention to them that's really the gotcha oh I forgot we're stopping at a work site over here today he also registered that very truck that you see with the uh, camper on it And it looks like it's coming out from the dipstick hole. Now, the dipstick appears to be secure, so I don't quite understand what's going on there. The good news is it doesn't appear to be coming from anywhere else. Is it just from the high pressure of, uh, uh, uh yes? Why would it high pressure out of the dipstick hole, though? I don't know. I'm going to have to uh, do a little research on that one. That's not one I've ever experienced. I'm sure somebody watching this video down below will leave a comment. <laughs> But we're gonna check the oil level, see how much he's lost, see if it's dangerous. I don't think it is. It doesn't appear it was that much, but uh, it doesn't take but a few drops to get on a header to make a hell of a smoke cloud. And it wasn't that bad, to be honest with you. Well, let's I look. Could be James Bond Jr. with enough smoke. Yeah, maybe he's a little spy hunter action, right? Beauty, see if we can figure out where this oil is coming from. Sure. Yep, I guess we gotta put a little seal on it. I've never seen one spit up through the dipstick before though. Yeah, That's I, the first for me. I figured it was rotted out. Yep, yeah, it just guess it had a little rubber seal on it. But I mean, I pulled them out when it's running before and nothing comes out of it, but I'm also not revving them. So. <laughs> I could see the smoke as I was taking it off and I was wondering what the hell that was. But at least I didn't go far and you caught that. And right. You behind me. Right, just looks like it needs a little rubber gogi on it. So we'll seal that up and it should be fine. That's it. Yeah. Otherwise, looks good. good. Guess you got something to do with your truck. Yeah, I'm gonna put a tag on that one too. That's it, that's his backup truck. Yep. Nice old beat up work truck. Then I can fix my other truck. Yes, or I can fix is what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> well, I tried to put that one steel I put on, the one that failed. Uh-huh. You guys have EC before the end of summer. Yeah, that. All year round you kind of need it here, it's always so damp. Considering that window won't go down anymore, so now I got one mm -hmm. window and one back window. But well, you can shut them down. There you go. Oh, I'm still running. I forgot I was running. Leaking out the dipstick. Who would have imagined? At least that's easy to fix, man. It could have been anything that was leaking on there. It could have been could have been push rod tubes or something that was more, you know, pain, of a pain in the ass to get to to work on, but that's probably the easiest oil leak to fix ever. <laughs> Imagine that. Right out of the dipstick hole. Well, it had to be one thing. At least it was that. And you are going to need to top that oil off because you probably lost about a whole quart on the way here, believe it or not. No nah. problem. Good thing is you're only a few blocks from home. Yeah, that's for sure. Yep. 
Okay. All right, we're gonna wrap this video up. Hey, don't walk away, we're wrapping the video up. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this guy here, taking off on me when I'm trying to record Always videos. in a hurry. See, I run so fast, I lost all my hair from the speed. Oh, me too, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as always, licky, likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck the dingle bellies. You get updates every time up video. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links. Rob's going to be doing something more on YouTube coming up soon. I might even have him working on some cars with me. I'm going to start cutting up some more Volkswagen. We got four pants coming. Yeah, yeah. He might have to take a day off so I can pay you. How's or that sound? Pay you back. <laughs> that. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so, anyways, thanks for watching, everybody. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, everyone. We're having a little bit of a uh, blow-by issue on here. Um, probably a little too much pressure in the crankcase. You might have to move the breather hose, which is currently vented to the atmosphere, to the underside of the air cleaner. But typically on cars, that ah, it runs different. Doesn't run as good that way. I just I don't like that. I'm sure it's great and better for emissions and yada yada yada. But that's uh, not the way this one is set up, and uh, I don't think it's going to run as good as it does currently if we did that. The other reason is this thing has been outside in the rain for quite a while, sitting idle, and I think it may have ingested a little bit of water, and that uh, oil may have a little bit of dampness in it, and what that means is when the oil gets hot, and it starts to um, boil off that oil, you get a lot of crankcase pressure, and it starts seeping out of other places, and one such other place that's nice and low for the oil to easy get out of is a dipstick hole. So that's something we're gonna need to look at. I did see some steam coming out of the breather vent uh, on the car when I was running it earlier today, but I have not run it as much as him, driving it across town, of course, because it was not registered, not insured, so there's not a whole lot that I can do with it. He's got his lights on. All right, wicked. There he goes. Yeah, damn streaks on the windshield. Ruins my video. <laughs> It's really great seeing all those lights working that I spent all that time on, so everything's working really, really nicely. Let's see if he uses his turn signal. I think he's turning right. There he is. <laughs> Oops, wrong way. Here we go. It appears that's uh, not so much a blow-by issue, but there's just a whole lot of water in that oil. Because remember, that old carburetor faced straight upwards with a foam filter on it. And prior to changing out this one, it rained a shit ton onto that foam filter, which, of course, rained the water down the intake manifold, which means there's probably water in that oil, too. And I hadn't really thought about it before, but it makes perfect sense that that water is boiling off. Because once that water hits boiling temperature in that hot oil, that's exactly what it's going to do. Now the breather that you can see way down there on the right hand side, and no it's not connected to the air cleaner, and yeah it probably should be to reduce the uh, crankcase pressure, but I don't like the way the vehicle runs when that's the case, especially if there is any blow by, or in this case steam. But yeah, that uh, little filter was blowing off a lot of steam when I started running it earlier, but I didn't quite run it enough to get the oil hot enough to make uh, any large amount come off, but that's probably why the uh, dipstick is blowing out. So for anybody that wants to say otherwise, that's probably shouting, that engine is shot, it's got all kinds of blow-by. No, I don't think that's actually the case. We're gonna dump the oil in this thing, change it out with some fresh, and I think it's gonna be just fine. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be. Yeah, get over here. That's it, I'm gonna be a letcher. Oh my, oh, Asian lady, yummy. <laughs> But we're only a few blocks from his house, and it uh, looks like everything's working just fine. In fact, you notice it's not fogging anymore. It's only when he revs the snot out of it. And this guy, Rob, really will, yeah, he'll push machinery to its limit. I won't be surprised if he blows the engine out of this thing in a few weeks and I have to fix it again. <laughs> so he used to treat his sand rail. hope he understands that he needs to lock this thing because people when they see a weird car they tamper with it you know all the little Honda Civics and things in the world people don't mess with unless they're gonna steal it for parts but uh, people see something like this yeah they go and they pull on the door handles and they, they sit in it and they start messing with things and you'll find them playing with the engine and pulling and pushing on things and the fact that the engines exposed doesn't make it any better either because somebody just might you know do something to it 
somebody that doesn't like Rob, and we think this would happen to his sand rail in the past, that uh, an ex-boyfriend or an ex-husband or something, one of the women he was dating, tampered with his sand rail and did something to it, and uh, it was running one day, and the next day it was seized. I didn't know what to do with it. He didn't know what to do with it. I was like, it needs another engine, dude. It's uh, shot. He ran it for a short bit, and the engine locked up, and that was the end of it. Good to see everything working. And the camera screen looks a lot lighter than what I'm actually experiencing. The camera's a little more sensitive than the human eyes are. So it has a self-adjusting gamma on it and it will amplify the light. But uh, I'm looking at the lights here as it starts to get uh, dark and they're working quite well. They're small, but they're bright. I'll probably be doing something similar on Eleanor. if he uses a signal. Come on, Rob, use a signal. There he goes. Oop, crunch. <laughs> he said so himself, he's gotta get used to driving stick again. Also, those turn signals are not self-canceling. That Chinese switch was never meant to be on a Volkswagen, and that's why that light is still on. <laughs> All right, well, he made it home alive. Looks like it's gonna be good. What'd you think? It's pretty good, I'm getting better at driving it. Yep. It's a little weird being all stiff and shit. That yeah. That's the no power steering, no power brakes. No power or anything. No, but I have power in my legs by the time I'm done. <laughs> you got yourself a pizza there. Hell yeah. That's going to be a fun night for you tonight. I hope so. And me, they're going to have two Mexican girls coming to join me. Oh, okay. Sounds Mercedes like fun. coming to join me. Oh, three, uh, four way. Or none of them. And I'll just go to another girl's house all the way up north. And it's a one way. <laughs> well, you should be good to go. I way to hell. I think you're going to be good to go. We do need to change that oil on there, though. So I think there's a little bit of water in there from all that rain. That's probably what it was. When that old air cleaner was on, it was foam, and it pointed up because it was like a like a, a foam dish almost. And all the oil that went down in the engine, I think, went in the crankcase, and that's what's boiling off right now. So that's probably causing a little excess crankcase pressure when you rev it up and it gets nice and hot. All right, well, I guess I have to watch one of your videos to see how I do it on a VW. There's a plug right dead center of the engine. Just pull it out. Unscrew it. That's it, then. I think it's like a 19 millimeter. Just let the oil just run. What about a filter? Uh, there isn't one. There's no filter? Nope, there's no filter. There is a screen in there, and it's probably a good idea to pull it out, but uh, I don't think you need to, but it's, everybody watching the video is probably screaming right now. I mean, you probably should pull it out and just check it, but <laughs> yeah, it's just like a little screen for fix catching the, piston bits. Fix the oil plug, I guess. But there's just a drain plug underneath, and uh, pull that out, let the oil out, put some new in there. Yeah, it's easy enough, and I think it'll probably just stop blowing. I think that's all it was, just the, uh, oh, it's, it's the pushing steam. Blowing. Well, out of the uh, crankcase vent, you got steam coming out of it too, so I saw that. So there's definitely some water in there. That's that's probably all it is. It's one of those things you just gotta address it soon because it's not gonna get any better. And over time, it's really not good for the bearings and stuff because the, the uh, oil doesn't work as good as it should if there's water in there. So yeah, I can hear like metal scraping, but no, you're brakes. not hearing that. <laughs> maybe the brakes. Yeah, maybe the brakes. They rub a little bit. Yeah, they rub a little bit. That's all. Yeah, but it hasn't been driven in I don't know how many years. Not long. <laughs> <laughs> Not probably a long time. In. Not in the condition we got it in. Oh man, yeah. that thing was a mess. Well, we're wrapping up the video. All right. Take care, Rob. Thanks, guys. See you later.